Some artists like to make abstract sculptures, and that means that the sculptures are not a picture of anything. They're just an arrangement of shapes and forms and colors and things like that. These sculptures are by an artist by the name of Louise Nevelson. And what she did was she would find objects like in the junk or things that were cast off that nobody wanted. Pieces of wood from the wood shop that people had sawn off and didn't want. And she'd glue them together in arrangements. And then she'd paint them all one color. So her stuff was monochromatic, meaning one color. She called her sculptures assemblages, which means various objects put together to make a sculpture, in this case. She said, when you put things together that other people have thrown out, you're really bringing them to life, a spiritual life that surpasses the life for which they were originally created. This is a picture of Louise Nevelson. And for this next sculpture, we're going to be using her work as inspiration. We'll be working monochromatically, and we'll be making abstract sculptures in a box like hers. All right, we're going to start with a 12 by 18 piece of paper, unless I decide to start with something bigger, if I can find anything bigger. And you need a square, but you have a rectangle that's not a square. So this is how you can make a square out of it. You fold it down at a diagonal, and you make sure that you match up those sides as best as you can right down there. And then you crease it. And see, I wasn't satisfied with my angle, so I'm doing it again. <laughs> and it might take a couple tries, but Better you try it than you keep asking me to do it. All right, now you trim off this piece here, but you're going to save that because you're going to use that for the other parts because these are monochromatic sculptures. We're doing something based on an artist by the name of Louise Nevelson. And you just saw her works, some of them I showed you. All right, now fold the square in half. All right. Now, open it up and fold in one side to that center crease and crease it. Make sure it's lined up with the center crease. And do the same thing over here. Fold it right into the center crease and crease it. Okay. Now we're turning it around the other way and you're going to fold it in half this way. And crease it real good and then open it and fold in one end to that middle crease again, crease it, then fold in the other edge to the middle crease and crease it. Okay, so you're going to end up with 16 squares. Well, these are just uh, reference and to help you be able to bend this into a box. Okay, now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut from the edge down one of these creases to the crease that intersects it, okay? You're going to turn it all the way around to the other end, and you're going to cut straight down that way, okay? Now you'll be able to fold it, because you have the creases, and you fold it up with um, the pieces that are on the sides you fold them up, fold it up so that they're on the outside. So you take these two longer sides, and that's where you're going to put the glue, the longer rectangles. Okay, now you put your dots of glue. You see where I'm putting them? I'm putting them all the way around the rectangle, and then right down the middle of it to hold those other two pieces. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one, too. And now I'm folding it up into a box shape, and the smaller flaps, I'm going to bend them so that they're on top of the bigger flap that has the glue on it. And uh, 
you need to hold it for a little bit so that the glue sets up. Shouldn't take long. Okay, I'll just uh, show you how to fold some shapes and forms in paper. All right, you can start with a half circle to make a cone. And then you fold it around and you overlap the straight edges like that. And then you glue it together on those edges and you probably need to hold it because it'll be wanting to pull apart. Okay, so fold it all the way in and just hold it together like that for a little bit so that it sets up. All right, now you're gonna need to have something to put the glue on so you can glue it to another surface. So I'm making about half inch cuts all the way around. And of course I'm not measuring it, I'm just um, kind of judging by eye, trying to make them all the same size. And I'm going all the way around like that. Okay, and then I can bend them out or I can bend them in. And that'll be something to put the glue on. So that when I want to glue that to the box someplace, I can. Yeah, put the glue all the way around there. See, so I can glue it there, or I can glue it over there. And I just put the glue on those flaps, and it'll stay. And you can also take a strip of paper. I'm just going to use a wide short strip here. I'm using up all of this extra piece. I might even need more. Okay, and I'm accordion folding it. You've done this before, I'm sure. Watch how I do it. And then when I open it up, it looks like that. And I can glue that somewhere on my box. Any of those places, see? To the side, on the outside, wherever. You can also make fringe. And so you can cut a strip like that. And then you can cut your fringe how long you want it. And then you can do various things with your friend. You could curl it, or you could do like this, and you could bend the pieces of fringe in alternate directions all the way down. And that would make an interesting shape to add to your sculpture too. Something like that. Of course, I'd do them all if I was going to do that. Or you can take a piece of paper and you could uh, curl it like roll it around a crayon or a pencil or something. And like that, can go a lot of different places. Or to make a spiral, you start with a circle that you've cut out. And then you start on the edge and you cut all about a quarter of an inch from the edge and just keep cutting around, working your way into the middle of the circle. And when you get done with that, you'll have a spiral. Okay, so that's another thing you could add. You could even cut out some flat shapes and you can cut them on the fold to make them symmetrical. I'll just cut a heart. Doesn't mean you have to cut a heart. And I could use both of those things. Glue those someplace on my sculpture. See, like that. I could fold it so I have something to glue to, and then I could glue it so it hangs down, like that. And I could do something with my heart, too. I could maybe stick it on the end of something like that, and then glue those to it, or stick it on the spiral. my finished piece. Now if you want to use other forms or 
things to do with paper besides what I showed you in the preceding demonstration, uh, you're welcome to do that. You probably noticed that I used a cylinder and I didn't show you how to do that. I'm thinking that by now you probably already know. One thing that I tried to do is I tried to keep balance and unity in my sculpture, just like I do in the pictures I paint. You notice that on one side I have uh, the accordion folded strip and I have one on the other side kind of gives it unity because it repeats a shape and it gives it balance because it balances it. Now that doesn't mean you have to repeat everything on one side that you did on the other side. The monochromatic color scale will make the sculpture go together, but it also helps to repeat certain shapes, certain lines, or shapes or strips that have things in common. Like if you notice on your right, I have a spiral that I've pasted to the outside. And on the other side, if you could see it, there's a curl that I made and then I glued a shape on it. So the curved lines repeat each other at least to the extent that they're curved lines, and that helps bring the piece together. Okay, while you're putting your sculpture together, I want you to think about those things and try to have it interesting and try to have good design.